What about an, a work, a journal, or a book that's by more than one person? If there's three, four, or five authors, then the first time that you cite this, you need to include all of the authors. However, the second and following times you cite that, you can include just the first author followed by et al, which means all others and others. So here is an example. In this case, we have one author, two authors, three authors, and four. And pay attention, comma with an and conjunction at the end. This is very important. You must follow this style. These are the last names, the family names of the authors. So we have one, two, three, four authors here. And this paper is from 2007. So if it's three, four, or five authors, cite all authors the first time, as in this example. Here's another example, but a little bit later in the paper. So now we have the same paper, 2007. Zhanggu is the main author, the lead author, but now we use et al. So the first time it's in the paper, we do it this way. The second and after times, second and more, we do it this way, which is at all. But you must remember that first time. There's a special case of references for the same name and year. So let's look at an example of what I mean. Here's an example of a few authors. Iris, Iris Chernoff, Yvette, and Kim from a 2001 paper. Here is a different paper. This paper has different authors. It has Iris, Chernoff, Stein, Yvette, and Silver. So it looks like it's some people who are similar, but some people who are different. Now, how do they decide whose name goes first and whose name goes second, whose name goes last? That has no special rule. That depends on the paper and the authors. The first author did the most work, usually, unless there's a special note. So that does not go by alphabetical order at all. That is the paper decides that when they wrote the paper. So we cannot decide that on our own. That is already predetermined. So in this case, we have two papers. This is the first paper. This is the second paper. These are totally different papers even though some of the authors are the same. Let's go ahead and see how we would cite that inside of our research paper. So here we have Iris Chernoff, Yvette et al. and Iris Chernoff, Stein et al. So what are we doing here? We're saying that these have multiple authors. We should be able to use et al. the second or more times in our paper. Not the first time. The first time, remember, we need to write out everybody. But the second and after time. However, if we just wrote Iers at all, and then here we wrote Iers at all, then these two papers would look the same. And the reader would not know which paper is which. So what do we do to solve that problem? We go ahead and we list out the names until there's a difference. So here we have Iris Chernoff, the vet, and here we have Iris Chernoff, Stein, because here, the vet, and here, Stein. This is where the author list changes. So now we are able to look at the reference list at the back, and we can see these papers are different. Which paper is which? That's the key point. Help the reader understand how to find the correct paper. Sometimes you cite a paper that has no author or what we call an anonymous author. That is an author who didn't provide their name. 
How can you address this situation? You can make it clear by having the first few words of the reference, which is usually the title of the article or the title of the book, for example. Double quotation marks are around the title of an article, a chapter, or a web page, and italicize the title of a periodical, which is a journal's name, a book name, or a brochure or report. It's a little bit hard to get your head around, I think. So what's a general rule of thumb we can use to try to understand this kind of rule, which is actually a very common approach that also MLA follows. And that goes something like this. If you have a big piece of work, like a book, remember that a book will be made up of numerous chapters, right? So you have a chapter number one, and a chapter number two, and a chapter number three. These chapters can have a name. That name should be inside quotation marks when you use it in your reference. Quotation marks for chapter name. The book name, however, should be underlined. Or, if you, if you don't need to underline it because you have a computer, which is what most of us use these days. It used to be you underline it on a typewriter. But on a computer, you can use the italic. Remember italic is that it's slanted, slanted this way. Italics. Italics, remember, is the same as an underline. Same idea. The same meaning. So what can we do? We can remember this rule quite simply by always taking into account that are you citing the big thing or the small thing? Are you citing part of something or the whole? If it's part of something, then it goes inside quotation mark. If it's the whole thing, then it's underlined. But remember, if you're using a computer, we don't really use underline much. We can use the italics so we can make it angled like that. Let's look at an example here. Clear this off. On free care, I have a citation here. Now, this citation is not a person's name. Why? Because the person didn't add a name. I don't have a name. But inside my reference list, I do have a name of the article. That article is part of a journal. So because it's part of something bigger, it's a part of it, so we use the quotation mark. You can also pay attention here and see that the comma is inside the quotation mark. And then after the quotation mark is one space. But before the quotation mark are no spaces. After the comma is no space because we have the quotation mark there. We've gone over this in previous lessons. In this next example, we can see the book, College Bound Seniors, 2008. Again. We should use the author of the book, but we don't have the author. Why? Because it's anonymous, no author. So what do we do? We go ahead and use the first few words in the reference, which would be the name of the book. And it is a book, so we go ahead and we can italicize it. That is, write it at the angle. That's the same as underlining it. So what does that mean? That means it's a whole book. It's a whole. It's not the piece of something else. If you're writing your citations and you want to cite inside the text, you can also just use the word anonymous. So you can use this way, which is the first few words, or you can use this way, which is anonymous. Just say it's anonymous. And again, when you do it that way, you're going to do it the exact same way as before as far as the name goes. This is the name, comma, and then the date. Only anonymous is not a person. Nobody we know. It's a person, but nobody we know of. What happens when you have two citations together? 
How can you put them together? You need to put them in an order. That order is alphabetical order. If you have multiple authors and you just use their name, what if you have the same author but different papers in different years? Let me go over that again. One case is you have an idea, you write the idea, and this idea is not one person's idea, but many other people have researched this. So you've taken it from multiple papers, so you have multiple different authors from different papers. How do you put them together? By alphabetical order of the first author's name. Right? What happens when you have one author that has many papers from different years, and now you put them together in one citation. How do you order them? You order them by year, by the date. Let's take a look at an example. So here we have training materials are available, Department of Veterans Affairs. Now this is not a person, but when we don't have a person, sometimes we can use the name of the organization. So this organization is Department of Veteran Affairs, comma, 2001, comma, 2003. That means we have two papers. One paper, two paper. We have two research papers that we've drawn from and we're going to use a comma and in, in year order, by year. 2001, the earliest year. 2003, the later year. So you order it by the year. How about this example here? Past research. Gogol, 1990, 2006 in press. So now we have three papers. One, two, three. And we order them by the earliest date first. 1990, 2006 in press means it's at the publishers, but it's not finished yet. Same author, same date. What are we going to do then? This has actually happened sometimes. So here we have an author. Dewberry and Reed. Remember we use the ampersand here because it's inside the parentheses. Derryberry, <laughs> Derryberry, what an interesting name, and Reed. 2005, 2005. That is the same year. Those are the same authors. How can we put them together and the reader can actually find this? Well, we're going to use letter A and letter B. So this means that this paper is going to be the A paper, the second paper is going to be the B paper. In our reference list then, we need to specify A and B also, next to the, next to the date also. So this is just a way to clarify them here and in our reference. Two more works by different authors. We're going to use an alphabetical order separated by a semicolon. Let's take a look at this case, which is super, super common. Several studies, parentheses, parentheses, have supported this relationship. This is probably one of the most common uses of the way you're going to be inline citation. That is, you have an idea. And this idea has multiple papers you've drawn from, multiple papers and books. You're going to pull them in. Here, this is a simple example. We just have a two. But in reality, most of your writing, you're going to have five or six because you're doing your literature review. You're taking many ideas. You're putting them, the main things together, like a kind of puzzle, like a block, right? So in this case, how do we put those together? Because we have one paper from Miller and one paper from Shafransky and Mahoney. So how do we put these together? We're going to use alphabetical order. So that is M comes before S. That's the way we do it. Not by date. Because look at the date. 1999, 1998. 99 is later. We're not doing it by date here. We're doing it by the name. These are different people. This is a different case than when we just talked about. Let me jump back here real fast. I'm afraid you're going to get confused. It's very easy to get confused by this. Jump back, go back a little bit. 
what was this case here? This case was one author, multiple papers from different years. Same author, multiple papers from different years. That is quite different from the case of different authors. One author, different author. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's look at a special case such as this. Special case of supporting work. You can say see also. How does that work? Let's look at this example. Minor 2001. So here we have an author. We have a date. Here we have an author. Here we have a date, comma, in between. Here we have an author. Here we have a date. What we've done here is we have this little special case where we say, hey, see also. So our main reference is this, minor 2001. This is the idea. I took this idea I'm writing about from this person here. However, there are also other authors that are similar or have more information. Then I'm going to say see also. It's hard to know when to use this case because you could just write it out as we see in the first example. Sometimes I use this when I have the special situation where there's maybe an author who is the key point, but then there's another author that has done a kind of overall research or supporting research or meta-analysis. That is, they've analyzed many papers. I don't want to list all those papers, but you know, if you go read that person's paper, you can see many other papers in his reference list. He's reviewed many others in a meta-analysis. In that case, I like to use C also because I'm saying find that person and you can see a lot. But that's not really my main idea. My main idea is in this case, minor 2001. But if you go look at Adams, you can find a lot of supporting material. Thus, we can say that C also.